Jam on toast! Hey everybody, this is Cam. I'm here to talk to you about Cabin in the Woods. I believe Brother Franco did this for Movie Club a little bit ago. Um, I missed it, so I'm going to go back and do it now, because I can. The short sale is that five teenagers end up going to this Cabin in the Woods, where they're actually observed, and you can see that it's all manipulation plot, um, until they're all killed, or they find their way into the observation facility, and that's all I can say about that. My love it for this movie is the general concept. The idea of manipulating people into these scenarios um, and then watching them and then showing the movie watching them watching the kids is such a great fresh way to do things. Um, and the overall plot is actually compelling enough that you're like, you know what, I don't think I've ever heard of that before. And when you could say that and mean it, somebody did something right. My hate it for this movie is why, oh why in every end of the world type, oh we're getting killed scenario, nobody ever goes on the offense, um, or does it in any sensible manner at least. There's actually one guy who does, so that means it can be done. Nobody tried burning them. Uh, it's just kind of a crazy thing for me to go, oh well, I'll just leave that knife there. What? No. Pick up the gun. Pick up the sword. Take it with you. Worst case, you shoot a few rounds before you die. Maybe you save someone else in the process. MPE for this movie? The Fool. I went back and forth several times between whether or not it's The Fool or The Virgin. But if The Fool did not come back, the movie wouldn't have gone anywhere. There would have been not enough twist to get anywhere. There had to been someone who was able to beat out the system somehow and turn it on its head. And that's exactly what happened. That's what makes it a great movie, because if you're just watching these people watch these kids die, it doesn't really go anywhere for you. Move on to the categories. Aesthetics. Such a good job. What needed to be CG was CG. What needed to be costumes was costumes. And what killer costumes and CG work it was. There's a few things that I didn't agree with, like the bat's jaw separating, but that's a little thing. Um, overall, that bat was done fantastic, and I could do that. Aesthetics for me exactly what it needed to be. It was top of the line where it needed to be top of the line, and wasn't where it didn't need to be. Aesthetics gets a 90. Character development. The characters weren't developed the best, but they were developed pretty well. Um, you got to see the virgin, the whore, the fool, the athlete, and the scholar. All who were supposed to be, they all portrayed those symbolisms for the most part. Um, and the characters acted very well for having very little basis because they only had to be what they were until they're in. And that's what it was. It would have been hard to portray the character poorly, uh, the way the story, overall story was written. Uh, but they still did it excellently. Even the guys in the facility, you notice little bits and pieces of, of their personalities. You notice the interdynamics. You've got the security guard who's a strong conservative with it. You've got the two guys who are really liberal about their views on this. And you've got the woman walking back and forth between um, not enjoying it, but trying to accept it and move on. Character development gets an 85. Storyline. Actual storyline is kind of murky. Um, it's still really good, but the idea of, ta or, of taking five kids and having this weird thing and going through all this and having a bunch of monsters in cubes or whatnot in one place that unsecure um, I'm not sure why you would have that scenario possible but the movie does make you hate who you need to hate and it takes your heroes through it and you actually are cheering for the virgin and the fool um, towards the end of it even when they start kind of getting turned against each other um, and while it's an original story, like, I don't know that I'm, like, a huge fan of the actual storyline itself. Its delivery was phenomenal, and the concept itself is great. Uh, it's just, it could have been a little better, and I'm not sure where, but storyline gets an 80 for me. Compulsion. Where this movie wins at most places is constantly you want to see what's happening next. Like, where's, what's going to happen next? What are they going to pick? Who's going to get with what? How are the people controlling things going to manipulate things? There's so many different factors going on so many different times. You're just on the edge of your seat wondering what's going to happen. 
all the way to the point where like, oh my gosh, they actually found a way in. And like, well, what happens when they hit that switch? Chaos. And through all that, you just want to know what's going to happen next, what's going to happen next, what's going to happen next. And wow, um, quite a good job. Why uh, Compulsion gets an 85. Total everything up, we get an average of 85. Makes it a top tier movie in my book. Everyone should give this a try, whether you like horror movies or not. For my rapid review, this is a must-see for anyone interested in horror or psychological thrillers. Even if you're not, I would recommend that you try it out. Do it in the daytime where you're not going to get scared or have nightmares, but try it. There's a thousand different things throughout the movie from your nightmares, but they're only there for so long uh, that you shouldn't be. It shouldn't be a problem. You should be able to look at this as a breakthrough in the horror genre, and love it for what it is, a good movie. And it helps that there's cute girls in it and there's cute guys. Chris Hemsworth, for all you ladies who like Thor. And it's an original movie when it comes down to it, which you don't see that often anymore. So thank you, Mr. Whedon. That's all for me. I'm Cameron. Have a nice day.